Hey guys, today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and actually compare different films together. I'm going to be comparing Fuji Acros 100 and Ilford Delta 100. They're all taken with a Mamiya RB67 with the standard 90mm lens. So I'm going to start with the Fuji Acros 100, or Acros, I don't know how it's pronounced. Just before I even continue with this, um, as of October 2018 it has apparently been discontinued, but it's currently still on the market and probably will be for a while. You can still pick up the old Polaroid films, so I don't think this is going to be unavailable for a while. The reason I first got this film is because I was having big troubles putting 120 medium format film onto the reels in the darkroom. Because the film's so wide, it flexes quite a lot and bends, and it's really difficult to put it onto the reel um, when developing it. So I was told that Fuji Acros 100 has a slightly thicker negative and it's actually firmer so it would slide on easier and not like crimpled and crease when you try and put it on. So that's why I got it. Um, the actual negative itself is a little bit firmer. Um, it doesn't really make too much difference in the darkroom but it is labelled as a professional print quality film. So I've got a few examples here. Firstly, sharpness. Now these aren't the best quality scans I could have got but Scanning is time consuming and expensive, so the resolution of all of these pictures is about 2400 pixels per inch, which gives a file size of, for black and white, um, about 10 megabytes. But proper scans of these films you can expect to see about 60 megabytes, especially for medium format. The Mamiya, especially handheld, is quite difficult and slow to focus, but it can give amazing results. So if we just zoom in to the front of this car that I took a picture of, you can see the tyre is really sharp, the number plate is quite sharp and the grill where the headlights are is really sharp as well. That's pretty good sharpness and a pretty good quality. If we compare that to a picture taken with Delta 100, so this is an Ilford film and it's one of their new technology films and it's actually one of my favourite films ever to shoot on. This does have the edge in terms of sharpness over the um, Acros 100 and it's all taken with the same lens um, so the sharpness does come down provided I didn't move the camera taking the picture the sharpness does come down to the film and you can see side by side they're both pretty sharp but the Ilford Delta does have the edge the sharpness obviously does come down to the aperture as well um, but I believe these were all taken at f8 which on medium format is actually a fairly shallow depth of field still so the sharpness does get better than this Next up is exposure latency, or in digital terms, dynamic range. I'm going to go in the same order and start off with the Fuji. As you can see, this picture was taken with a slight backlight um, in a kind of dark forest area. Picks up the shadows really well. The image is potentially a little bit underexposed, I will admit, but this was taken with one of those really old Western Master light meters. They work absolutely fine, just not 100% accurate. But that gives you some idea that the film is somewhat capable of picking up highlights and shadows at the same time and not too sensitive to being under or exposed just like most negative films. This particular photograph has quite good tones it's kind of a nice balance between highlights and shadows however I have noticed that some pictures can be a little bit flat but I mean that's easily fixable by pushing the film or simply if you're printing in the darkroom add a bit of contrast to the, uh, to the enlarger or if you're editing the scan in Photoshop, just adding a little bit of contrast. The Delta 100 has a lot more contrast, but that does mean that you do tend to lose some highlights and some of the shadows as well. There is still some information in there, um, but the whites are white and the blacks are black, basically. But again, going in the opposite direction, if printing in the darkroom, you can add filters in the larger to reduce that contrast. and Obviously in Photoshop you can reduce that contrast or bring back some information in the shadows and highlights. I'd kind of rather have a flatter image with more information in it than a nice contrasty image out of out the camera, off the film. Then you have more to work with in the darkroom or Photoshop. So I'm going to move on to price now. So I'm just taking a quick look at Amazon here. The Fuji is actually still available despite it being discontinued. They have a pack of five medium format rolls which come to £39.99 whereas the Ilford Delta 100 
again for a five pack of medium format rolls is £29.35 which is probably one of the reasons that the Fuji has been discontinued. Overall I have to say I prefer the um, Ilford Delta 100. It's cheaper, it's sharper and although I said that it's better to have a flatter image with more information it's negative film, that's kind of a digital mindset I have. It's negative film and the reality is that you can still pull a lot of information out of the highlights and shadows. It's got more contrast, it's, um, it's a better looking image. That little bit of extra thickness in the actual negative of the Fuji isn't really enough to persuade me to get that over this. Um, it's £10 more expensive per 5 rolls and doesn't really make it that much easier to put onto the roll in the darkroom anyway. So there we have it, if you have any film suggestions that I can do a review on. Um, I know Kodak X-Chrome has just been re-released, um, so I'm looking forward to getting my hands on that. Other than that, I hope this was a good comparison, and hopefully I'll see you in another video.